Okay, okay, we gotta change the engine oil. You know, it never fails when you uh, let your wife start driving the car. You miss oil changes or you let it go too long. Not really, I think I just forgot to reset the uh, oil change uh, monitor in this car when I changed the oil last. But we'll show you how to do it uh, in this video. We're gonna change the oil. But worse yet, we got that nasty little check engine light on up there. So, can't get my finger in there. That's no good. We need to uh, diagnose that and figure out why the check engine light's on on this uh, Ford Fusion. This is a uh, 2015 Ford Fusion with 58,872 miles. And that nasty little malfunction indicator light is illuminated. Okay, we got a P01410 O2 heater circuit. Bank one, sensor two. P0054 H02S heater resistance bank one sensor two and P0141 again O2 heater circuit bank one sensor two. Howdy folks, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. Today we have our 2015 Ford Fusion with the 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine. We need to change the engine oil and investigate a check engine light. So, got that nasty little light on in the dash and we need to figure out what's going on there and try to make it go away. Stay tuned, we'll show you what we're going to get into. Step one, drain all the old used motor oil out of your drain pan. You don't want that guy overflowing all over the floor. Black gold. So at this point in time, we are wondering why in the world we have all this free energy, but no waste oil burner. Looks like we got more of my neighbor's leaves up there. We're gonna have to get all that out of there. That's great. So this is the same engine as the black Ford Fusion that we worked on a couple months ago. The black Ford Fusion, if you watched along on that video, the owner that I was trying to help out ended up taking it 
to a service garage and there was a three-legged fuse, which I've never seen before. Uh, I'll try to find a picture of it and put it up uh, either over here or on the next slide of the video. And it was a three-legged fuse, which was just weird. So I think the uh, wastegate solenoid that was full of oil that we cleaned out and that black Ford Fusion uh, made the fuse uh, blow. And by cleaning out all that excess oil that was in the place it wasn't supposed to, we actually remedied the problem, but we didn't know about the fuse. So he got that fuse replaced and didn't have any problems after. So we couldn't really fix it here all in-house, but uh, we sure did give it a try. It was just a 8 or $10 fuse short. But who does, who, who does that? A three-legged fuse. Explain that to me. doesn't make any sense. So this car calls for 5W20, a blended oil. I always use Penn's oil. And then a PH3614 Fram oil filter. Fram and Penn's oil is usually my go-to. Everyone has their own preference. This is just what I like. This actually was only $14 and change available at one of your biggest online uh, sales shops. So had to buy three of them at a time, but we'll use it eventually. But uh, $14 was cheaper than I can get it anywhere. And it was delivered to my door. So buy local, but when it's that much cheaper, I can't hardly justify it. So step one, you want to get the car warmed up and up to operating temperature. Uh, the next step is we're going to raise and support the vehicle with the jack and jack stands. I'll take you over to the side and show you where to lift on this vehicle. So we're at the side of the car now. And similar to the uh, Ford Focus that we did in a previous video, you want to look for the side, a little notch in the ground effects usually indicates that that's a jack point. You can't see it, but when I put you underneath, you'll see it. There's actually a little square cutout here. So here's your square cutout. And there's a frame hem right here where the unibody seams all come together. And they want you to jack right on this uh, seam where the uh, uh, subframe is pinch welded together. So we're going to put our jack right here and support the vehicle. We're going to install our jack stand underneath the front suspension right behind the front tire. There. Jack stand in place up there, right underneath the swing arm. Okay, so this car actually has, I don't know if you can see it in the video, an arrow right here indicating this is where they want you to jack. I forgot about that. The notches, if you look up there, are actually where it's attached to the car. So you want to look for this arrow. And now we got this sweet complete underbody covering that we have to take off underneath the engine to drain the engine oil. Got my Milwaukee cordless ratchet. You don't need a cordless ratchet, but it will surely uh speed up things in this process and also help you out uh if it's cold on the reinstallation and I'll show you when we get there. Down we go.
So there's our jack stand, safety first, just in case anybody wants to complain. There it is. And then here's this big cover. This whole cover needs to come off so you can access the drain plug and the oil filter. And it's mounted with these uh, 10 millimeter head screws. So we need to go around the perimeter and remove all those. Then you have these little pull tabs. This is probably the speed up installation of the factory. You gotta get a screwdriver in there and slide that down. This middle section just comes out. Well, not completely out, but down. And then it relaxes it and lets it fall down. If I remember, I think we have about 13 screws holding this thing in. So uh, I'll zip all the screws out and I'll show you what, and pop these guys out. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's off of here. Get a lot better view of it out from under the vehicle. Okay, there she is. That's the cover you have to remove to uh, change the engine oil. I was wrong, it has 13 screws. 13 screws, and I don't know, three foot by like two foot cover. These aren't real screws, they're like a really coarse threaded screw more coarse than even a drywall screw and uh, they don't thread into like a machined hole or a bolt they thread into like a plastic block and that makes it very difficult to get these screws started uh, when the weather is cold because that pl plastic stiffens up and it's uh, hard to get these to engage it's also very easy to strip out so you're gonna to wanna to have a tool, kind of like a my Milwaukee uh, cordless ratchet, so you can apply pressure to actually push the screw into the plastic while turning it. You can do it with a hand wrench, but it's really difficult to uh, get the force to push it in that you need. So you need to actually push on the screw, push into the plastic to get it to start it while turning it. One of our viewers in a previous video commented that he likes to pull the dipstick out to uh, vent the oil pan before you drain the oil. That's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, I just didn't think about it in my last video, so we're going to go ahead and do it uh, on our upcoming oil changes. I usually take the cap off, but uh, pulling the dipstick out just a little bit allows the pan to vent directly. So there's the engine oil fill cap. There's the dipstick. Woo! She's a little toasty. Got a 13 and a 15 millimeter. The focus is a 13 that we wrote down from last time. So if we're lucky, it'll be one of these. So here's the bottom of the transaxle. This guy right here. Here's the bottom of the engine oil pan. And the plug is out the back side. Right here is the drain plug for the engine oil. The 13 feels really loose, especially if it's a half inch. We're gonna go get a half inch. Okay, I'm back. Got our half inch wrench. Let's see if that does the trick. Oh yeah. That's real nice. Real nice fit there. Ah. 
I know who tightened this, and they tightened it too tight. That's me. Use the old double up wrench where you put the other wrench on the end for more leverage. Oh. There we go. You have to watch for the splatter. Make sure you account for enough room for the projectile motion from here down this way with your oil pan. Uh oh. It helps take the fill plug out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that was smart. Drain plug is right back that way. You slide forward to the front of the engine there's a little what well, looks to be like a oil cooler and then behind all these hoses is your oil filter so slide your pan up and we'll see if we can get this guy loose A little difficult with the camera in the way. Oh yeah, and then let it splash all over you. Because they put this oil cooler with the fittings in the bottom. You gotta weasel it out of these hoses here. And uh, as always, check for your gasket. Make sure it came off with it, it's on there. got our new oil filter I wet the gasket with a little fresh oil and uh, rubbed it around there so it's lubricated and you knocked your light out of the way so it blinds you and then you try to weasel her back up in there we'll make sure nothing's on your uh, Healing surface and get her started straight. Go on. There we go. So, you only want to tighten it by hand. Okay, it's good. I tend to over tighten it. But you definitely do not want to put a wrench on the new oil filter. So, new oil filter installed. 
we need to check the drain plug, clean it, and reinstall that. So here's the drain plug. It has a magnetic end. You want to check the end for any contaminants. Uh, it looks dented in. That's just the way it was made, but uh, there's nothing on there. You know, make sure there's no metallic objects on there. Gasket looks good. So we're just going to wipe this guy off and put it back in. Make sure the ceiling surface is nice and clean. Tighten her up. Don't over tighten your bolt, drain bolt. Um, I'm actually going to move the oil pan and turn the camera off and give it a nice, good, uh, snug tightening on it. But, uh, you know, don't put a three quarter inch drive ratchet on there or, or even a half inch drive, just a wrench. Make sure she's nice and snug, maybe grab it, short grab it and apply some pressure to it. Uh, don't overdo it. If you strip it out, it'd be very bad. Okay, so everything's done under here. For the oil change, we're gonna go up top and up there and fill the oil. And then we're gonna investigate that uh, O2 sensor uh, heating circuit fault. So I have my old half of a quart funnel. I'm keep one of those around to fill engine oil up. Got our engine oil. And the this car calls for a refill capacity of 4.3 quarts. This is a five quart jug, so uh, should be just shy of one quart left in this jug when we're full. So I'm going to dump it in until the jug on the side indicates, it's over here if you didn't know that, indicates one quart. And you want to make sure it's draining in the engine faster than you fill your funnel. Otherwise, it's likely to uh, overfill and go all over your engine just as you're trying to get it inside. I'll check it. Looks like we got about a quart to go or so. Really close. Okay, we're going to call that good. We're right around the one quart mark or just a little below. I'm going to take this over to something level and set it and double check it. But uh, we're good to start the engine now. Let it run for a little bit. Uh, and then turn it off. And we'll double check the oil level and add any if necessary. If you're going to use one of these as a funnel, keep the cap so you can keep it from leaking and then put old rags in it to keep dirt out and uh, to soak up any excess oil. Works great. Make sure you move the jack stand far away from the car before lowering it. All 
as you saw on a, a little over full, but we didn't, uh, full marks actually, that notch or a little there, but the engine oil filter isn't full yet. We didn't, uh, start the engine and let it run. Just wanted to, uh, double check that and make sure it wasn't grossly over full because I did not do a step that I usually do and I highly recommend you do is while the engine oil is draining I usually remove the jack stand and lower the vehicle so it's nice and level to allow any of that extra oil to drain out so we'll start this we'll let it run and we'll double check the engine oil level after it uh, sits for a minute and make sure it's not grossly over full we did actually uh, didn't fill it. Uh, we're about three tenths of a quart short, so maybe that will account for the difference. Oh, there she is. Show you how to reset the oil life monitor. We're going to use these buttons here on the left hand side of the uh, steering wheel to go up, down, and enter. I'm going to go over here. If you hit the left button, it'll access the menu. We're going to go settings, vehicle, and oil life reset. So we're going to hold OK to reset. Wait for the bar to go. Reset successful, and it says we have 100% oil life remaining. Now she's really up in the air. So we jacked it up over there enough to remove that big cover underneath, which exposed the subframe. Then we were able to put the bigger jack in there, lift it up further, and put a jack jack stand over on the passenger side and then put a second jack stand here where you would normally jack on the side uh, because now the whole front end of the car is up like this instead of tilted at the side so this gives us a lot more room i can actually uh, roll under there with the creeper now and we're going to investigate uh, the o2 sensor problem we're going to look and see if there's any noticeable or obvious problems with the wiring or the connections and try to find them because I, I have no idea where they're at in this car. So here's the setup. Like I said, we have a jack stand there. We have the jack with the cup uh, with surrounding a bolt so it's less likely to slip off and then the other jack stand over there that we showed on the side. So we're going to roll under here. I think we need to take off this heat shield to expose the second O2 sensor. Whoop. Two more screws. Okay, this is the first time I'm looking at this too, so I'm learning the same time you are. Clip you off there and show you what I'm looking at. Can't see. Okay, here's the transaxle. There's your catalytic converter. And if you look up in here, right there is an O2 sensor. That's after the catalytic converter. The wires are clipped to the heat shield. We're looking at that from up above and goes up there to the back side of the engine. Up that way. 
Now, I would assume that's downstream because it's after the catalytic converter. But where is the upstream? There's your turbocharger. Must be right on the exhaust manifold underneath the intake there, if it's up there. Or maybe it only has one, I don't know. I bought two, it said it had two. I have to uh, do some digging here. I don't see any up there. Do you see any up there? There. Now, uh, since we were changing the oil and the fault indicated that there was something wrong with the O2 sensors, we went ahead and picked up both O2 sensors. Supposedly, it has an upstream and a downstream. This is the part number DY 1268 Motorcraft. Came from Rock Auto. Uh, I assume it's just a Bosch uh, O2 sensor branded with Ford's name. That's supposedly the downstream sensor. And then the upstream sensor, the DY 1273, which I'm having trouble locating the sensor on the car. I'm not sure where it's at, uh, or if it even goes to this car. Maybe I just didn't find it yet, but supposedly this one's in there somewhere. So before we get all gung-ho about changing the sensor, I got this one located. We're ready to try to take this one out. I'm going to go over to the fuse panel in the engine compartment and check the fuses. So on the driver's side of the car, this is the fuse compartment in the, or the fuse box in the engine compartment. It's got two little tabs up here. You just push to unlock it, lift this up. And you gotta kind of work it underneath the hood release cable. And then she's out of there. They were nice enough to include a diagram on the backside here, but uh, I don't really know what all those different sensors are for. I did pull up on the internet a diagram to try to figure out what's what and try to get this light positioned. I did find that these guys here and these guys are directly related to the powertrain control module. Nothing that I found directly says anything about O2 sensors, but uh, the powertrain control module has to uh, power those, if I'm guessing right. And this is actually one of those three-leg fuses that I was talking about from the Black Ford Fusion. I think it was actually this one. So this 15 amp fuse has three legs. Basically a power, I believe, in the middle and then uh, supplies two circuits, one on the left, one on the right. This is a specialty fuse that was blown on that black Ford Fusion that we were trying to work on. Looks good in this one. I don't have any of those fuses. They're really weird. I don't understand it. Guess I'm a little old school. So I checked this 15, this 10, and these two 20 amp micro fuses or whatever you want to call it. I, I'm just too old school for all of this. I've never seen these three legged fuses before. And I think these small fuses are even smaller than the smallest fuse that I uh, have in the past. I might have some of those, but they sure do look a whole lot smaller than the, the smaller ones that I have purchased in the past. So I checked things out in here and I don't see any noticeable fuses blown. So we're gonna go ahead and try to replace that downstream O2 sensor that we located and see what happens. Hopefully we can replace that and it'll fix the problem. And if we can't fix the problem by replacing that, maybe uh, we'll locate the upstream O2 sensor while we're doing this and replace that one too. We did it. Holy crap. It came out. I'll go down here uh, and show you how 
we removed this when we installed a new one and what tools and how I was situated. Uh, I was really questionable and concerned of whether or not I was going to get this one out without having a bunch of problems and uh, To be honest just cursing at it a lot because it's kind of tight in there and awkward to get in there. This thing's all uh, Carboned up really good um, I mean that could be part of why it's uh, not working right if it isn't working right Oops, I have no idea. I mean I gotta assume all that carbon in there is gonna Make it not work as good as it should. Probably from uh, idling too much. So we're going to get the new one. We're going to put a little uh, never seize on the threads. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we're going to do it anyways. And we'll thread it back in. Here's the new unit. I removed the plastic safety cap and it actually already has never seize on the thread. So hey, thanks a lot, Ford. I think it says, I don't know if you'll be able to read that, probably not, because it's too fine. It's upside down. But uh, there's the wording on there. Probably too small to focus. It says uh, Ford, and it says Germany on it. So this bad boy is made in Germany. Let's get it back in there. See what happens. There we go. Oops. There's the transaxle. Here's the hole that we reached up in. The O2 sensor's uh, actually back that way. It's directly above this uh, cross member that supports the transaxle. If you can look up in this hole, it's actually right there, or supposed to be right there. There's a dent in the uh, heat shield. That's where it threads in. Turn you upside down. You actually have to have your wrench out this way and look up through the hole in the cross member. And I reached around here with this and this hole here with my other hand and held the socket on and then I had the socket the specialty socket with a like a one inch wrench sticking out over here and then I had like a helper wrench on the end of it and once she popped loose she just uh, spun right out real easy once I get the new one started I'll uh, I'll show you how I how I loosen the old one the a little bit better picture than what I got right now Okay, so I can't see you, but here's the hole for the O2 sensor. I'm looking through the hole back here in the cross member. And then reaching around here, my arm's probably right in your way. You don't want to twist your wires too much. Kind of work them around with you as you thread it in. Okay, you probably looked at my arm most of the time there, but uh, we got it threaded in. I'm just trying to spin the wires around so they didn't get all twisted up. And then this is a specialty socket. This is for O2 sensors. It has this slot all the way up the side so the wire can go through there. So it's a six point socket, except it has a slot right in one of the middle sections. So when you put this on, the wire goes in the slot and allows you to get on the socket.
just like so. And this socket has a hex on the end of it. It also has a, a square to attach a ratchet. But uh, I attached a wrench out this direction. Um, you're going to be in my way. I'm going to move you, but I attached a wrench out this direction and then put a cheater bar wrench on the end of it. There's your wrench. There's it's on your specialty socket. It's sticking out this way. And then I attached this cheater bar on here. this direction and I was able to get a really long really bad lighting sorry guys I was able to get a really long uh, moment arm to pop that old guy loose so I'm going to tighten this the same way I'm not going to use the cheater bar but I'm just going to tighten it with this one inch wrench up here and uh, then I'll once I tighten it I can't do it with you in the way, but once I tighten it, I'll show you how the wire gets routed back up to the engine. Okay, so we've got our O2 sensor. There he is. Pretty well tightened. And then the wire needs to run. This gets really hot, so you want to run your wire so it's not touching this heat shield and it's held off by these clips. Pops into this side on this one, and then it goes on the other side of the other one to kind of lock it in there. And then up here, if you can see it, I'm not sure what you're looking at up there, but up here there's a black plastic clip. I believe my hand's hitting this black plastic clip up there, and then it plugs in. I unplugged it from the top side, uh, so I'll show you how I did that once we get the car back down on the ground. See these clips, clips on this side on this one, then it goes over and clips on this side, so it kind of weaves in there, and uh, it keeps it off of the heat shield. Okay, we still didn't get it plugged in up there. There's a plug, but I got it clipped into this black plastic guy. And everything down here should be good. Uh, that should keep it off the heat shield up there. All we have to do now is lower the vehicle and plug it in from the top side. Of course, we're gonna, I'm not gonna show it because it's trivial, but. Uh, Get my light down. Down here we have to install that heat shield cover again. And then our large uh, black cover from changing the oil. Okay, we got our whole cover bolt button back up. As I mentioned earlier, going to have some type of power tool so you can get those bolts all these bolts well not that one but all these bolts started back in those plastic uh, inserts now be careful in tightening them I just use this guy to get them started and then I switch to a manual quarter inch drive ratchet to snug them all up and I did notice that uh, Two to three of mine, either from my doing or from a previous oil change I had at the dealership, are kind of stripped. They tighten in and screw in, but they don't. Uh, they don't get firm. At least as firm as what I'd like them to be. So, probably gonna have to change those little red plastic inserts out on the frame, 
after you do this so many times but uh, covers back on O2 sensors in we just need to lower and plug her in on the top okay we're back on the top side and we're going to try to get the O2 sensor plugged back in I don't know if you can see it down there it's down th that way behind that bump out in the firewall that's the actual O2 sensor let me dip you down in there and see if you can see if you can get a better look there's the O2 sensor there's the wire we just put in the clamps and then it's coming up here it's in that black plastic clamp and it plugs in just to the right side of your screen there this is the first time i'm actually seeing it previously i just uh felt around by hand so you need to get that plugged back in move that black cover here just lifts off you can see it down in there down in this cavity here Clip goes up. Okay, that guy's plugged in there. Okay, I think I found the upstream O2 sensor. I think it's this other plug right here. Goes off right on the side. I can feel it. It's right on the... Uh, right on the side there um, that looks like it's going to be really difficult to get to so if you approach the engine from the driver's side here's the intake here's your brake uh, reservoir so if you look down in between there it's right beneath uh, I don't know if you can see it it's right beneath those heater hoses right there. So I can't show it to you really, but uh, just bad lighting. If you look right down in there, it's beneath the intake hose, kind of off the side at an angle up this way, beneath your heater hoses and right behind the fuel line. So you'd have to attack it from this angle. But... Uh, Right now, we're going to put everything back together, clean those leaves out of there. Right, All we have to do is put that top cover back on, and uh, we'll clear the codes and take it for a test drive. So we just need to clear the codes. No codes in the computer. Let's take it for a test drive. Beautiful rainy day here in, in the Midwest. It's starting to get cold, 44 degrees. The car is really filthy, so I think we're going to take it to the uh, car wash and uh, try to hose some of the garbage off of it. It smells like butthole in here. I think they got a problem with their drains. We did it. No more check engine light. Super happy, super stoked. Uh, we did it for less than a hundred bucks. We bought both O2 sensors. Even though we only needed one and we only replaced one, we'll have the other one if it ever encounters any problems in the future. So we ended up replacing the downstream uh, O2 sensor. Fixed all the problems. Right on. If you uh, encountered a similar problem, don't be afraid to try to fix it on your own. You might want to make sure you have the tools that I used in this video. 
at least give you a fighting chance or help you complete the project a little bit easier. I think the key was the O2 sensor socket in the big wrench. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you learned a little something from it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave all those questions and comments in the section below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We got projects everywhere in this garage. Many that we need to start on, some are half started. Get a truck cab there, a tractor on a lift there. Wheel horse, in case you wondered what color. Bobcat over here with a leaky oil line we just ordered today. Johnny number five, Mr. Forklift over here needs all kinds of stuff. Just all kinds of projects. You never know what we're going to work on next. Thanks for watching, everyone.